Well, hello there everyone and welcome along to a uh, brand sparkling new Monday evenings live broadcast. So thanks so much for uh, dropping by this evening guys. Great to see you and thanks so much for taking the time out to uh, drop into Looseville. Central Looseville, Central UK. So we're broadcasting from uh, the middle of um, England actually. Middle of England and middle of, middle of Great Britain. So we're middle of everything. A bit like the uh, paper I use, that's midway, mid texture. Everything in my life is just middle, just average. Middle, middle, middle. But the great thing is, guys, we can all paint together and uh, get loose for a few moments or maybe an hour or so. Let's see how we go, guys. So uh, if I can offer out some uh, cordial welcomes to my esteemed guests this evening. And the first one in this evening is, is uh, Anna. Welcome along, Anna, from what sounds actually like a very sunny Germany. 30 degrees, Anna, in Germany. That is very hot. I do hope it's, uh, it's drifting our way, Anna. That would be great. If you could send me some sunshine, that will be perfect start to my day. So good to see you, Anna. Thanks for joining us. And uh, Barbara, welcome along. Good to see you there. And guess who's with us, guys? Guess who's with us? Janet Kyle from uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Welcome along, Janet. This is great news. We may be doing it. We may be calling on your esteemed book. Um, Jenny will have to tell me the title again of a little bit of negative painting. So we may call on your expertise, Janet, if we may. So great to see you. And um, oh, Cyclamens could be your thing as well. Perfect. Perfect. Hi there, Sally. Welcome along. 60 degrees and overcast in Kansas City. My word. Sounds like a, sounds like a detective uh, series, that does, doesn't it? The start of. Good to see you, Sally. Thanks for dropping by. And Bonnie, hi there. Good to see you. Hope you're keeping well. And thanks for joining us this evening. And guess who's back in the world of uh, uh, internet? Jenny Foles. Jenny Foles has... has vacated the uh, the Norfolk area and she's now resident now she's resident back in St Evanage so uh, it's a bit like Versailles and some of these French uh, uh, little towns beautiful names and St Evanage towering spires of St Evanage brilliant good to see you back Jenny and that the internet is working perfect Hi there, Deborah. Welcome along. And yes, let's paint some happy flowers. Let's do Bob Ross type approach to life. How's that sound? Always, uh, always enjoying it and always, uh, always happy. Good, good, good. Hi there, Karen. Welcome along. Good to see you there. And Susan, hi there. And you're another Cyclamen fan. This is great news. Great news. And uh, Linda, hi there from Sunny Cape Cod. Perfect. Everybody's got a little bit of sunshine today. This is good news. And Maria, welcome along. Good to see you. And Alina from Liverpool. Good to see you in Liverpool. Uh, maybe the weather's hotting up for us now, Alina. And I think we're going to be let loose a little bit more next week, which will be great. We'll see how that goes. And uh, Celine, hi there. Welcome along from Sunny. Is it Sunny? Yeah. Sunny Quebec, good to see you. And Susan, welcome along. Happy birthday to Atticus. Happy birthday to Atticus. Six today, guys. Atticus is six today. That is good news. He's almost catching up with little Toby. He's six and a bit. He's six and a, yeah, six and a bit. So uh, they, could, they almost could have shared a dog biscuit together to celebrate the birthday. Kyle style, exactly, Jenny. That was the name. Do your negative painting, Kyle style. Brilliant, brilliant. Let's all get that book. <laughs> when it's published, when it's pub published. Right, hi there. And uh, Sharon, welcome along. Good to see you. And uh, Janice, good to see you. And Beth from Texas. And Jilly from Morpeth. Diana, welcome along. Good to see you. And uh, Susan, welcome along. Okay, guys, okay. Let us get rumbling along. So... Um, you may have seen the image I put on earlier. Uh, this is one I painted a little while back, but I, I, I came across it again and I thought, ooh, that'd be nice. And uh, luckily people are quite keen on um, uh, cyclamen. So perfect combination. Um, it's a, it is a very simple one to do. So I've not actually done a pre 
um, line drawing for you this week because the, the, the difficulty, I, not the difficulty I find, but the difficulty I find people run into with the line drawing sometimes is when you've got too many lines there, when you've got too strict a drawing, uh, then you follow the lines a bit too much. So with this one, it's really just going to be a very few lines. I'm going to build up from there, which uh, will be a better way to do it. If you've copied my drawing exactly, you're going to be filling it in a little bit like um, a, uh, a, a colouring book, which is, uh, is not really getting you much further on. So don't worry, but what we're going to do, I'll, I'll give you a few... Um, Tips and techniques, how's that sound? That seems to be a popular phrase, tips and techniques, before we start, and then we'll go on to the main thing. How does that sound, guys? How does that sound? Good, right. So, what I'll do this week is, I've got my little propelling pencil there, good old Peter, he's doing his thing. 4B lead, yeah, quite wide width. I did have one, I don't know if I showed you this the other day, but there's, there's the one I used to use, so you can actually see the difference in the actual... Uh, tips of the pens, uh, pencils there. This one tended to break quite a bit and also you didn't get too wide a line. Sometimes the wide line is a bit more expressive. Right, okay. What I'm gonna do for a start is just very simply do the component parts of the image. So I'll draw a, a, a portrait area for the image to, to, that we're gonna use and then we're gonna use the spare space to do the little tips. Sound good, guys? Thrilled? Thrilled? Good, good, good. Same here, same here. Right, okay. Dot at the top. Are we in the screen there? Yeah, I think we are. And dot at the bottom. I'm always sort of painting blind, actually, when I do this because I can't really, uh, there's a time delay on my monitor, so I can't actually gauge if I'm uh, in screen or not, so, uh, Forgive me for that, but we're going to do portrait size, and this is going to be the area for our pot plant. Yeah. But before that, what we're going to do is the component parts. Yeah. So we've got some spare space over here. The very simply, and in fact, what I'll do this week, I'll show you the the colours we're going to use in the brushes because we need these for these uh, this little run through rather than after the drawing. So, colours we're going to use are, for the um, green area, we're going to be using lemon yellow, cad orange, we've got um, Indian red, we've got rose opera, we've got cad red and alizarin crimson. So the rose opera is um, Daniel Smith's, internationally take a mortgage out. No, I keep saying that, I shouldn't say that. It's not really a mortgage, it's just a massive loan. Just a massive loan. But uh, they're well worth it, guys. But uh, they'll last forever. So uh, sometimes you go for economy and um, it's not always the best thing, but you know my routine. I generally use Cotman's uh, colours. And there's another one, there's Sap Green, I'm gonna be using that. But uh, I do use a few other ones as well, which uh, Daniel Smith's, I use two or three of those, I think. Right, Rose Opera, Indian Red, Alizarin Crimson. We've got uh, Royal Blue, we've got Lavender, Cobalt Blue. I won't be using Indigo there. We've got Sap Green, we've got a bit of Turquoise, and again, I could do with a bit more of that. You see, I've had a bit of a clean up. I had a little bit of had a bit of a whip round and a clean up before you arrive, guys. As you do, push everything under the sofa, push everything in the cupboard. Uh, Perilene Green, Artist Quality Windsor Newton, Mauve, Purple, Sepia. They're the ones. Yep. Yeah. So I'll put a bit more. I can find it. There it is, lurking, lurking. There we go. Notice how I do that. It's in a line. It's in a line down the um, centre of the palette. Easier to get to, easier to control the strength of paint that we're looking for. Right, there's the colours. And the brushes are going to be these three fellows. Got Mini Dave, Small Dagger Brush. Got uh, 
the delightful and, and effervescent, effervescent, Susan, effervescent. New word for the day, guys. Um, we've got uh, Miss Rigger, large size six dagger, uh, Rigger brush, and we've got uh, Big Brian as well. So they're the key, key players in this uh, fabulous little Cicloin get together. Also, cup of tea. Um, sorry, Anna, can you buy this colour in June? Would that be the turquoise one or the rose opera? The best way to do it, Anna, is is, is on the internet. Um, if you're in the UK, there's a group called SAA and they do most colours. They're very good at uh, sending out fairly quickly. So if you type that in, that should come up. So a shameless plug there. There are other companies that do it, but um, UK... That's where I tend to get to most of mine. Right, okay. So, what we're going to do about it. What we're going to do for a start are the actual flowers. So, the actual flower shape is very simple. When you actually look at the cyclamen, it looks as complicated as AB23. But, if you just use a big brush and place the, almost the template shape down, then it, it, it just works very, very easily. So, all I'm going to do... Just here at the top, I'll do flowers, leaves and pot. And we'll just show how you do that. What I actually do is look at the leaf shape for a start. And really, all, all it is, is a V shape, yeah? So, just with my pencil, you don't even have to do this bit. You can do it just with a brush. V shape, yeah? Very simple, yeah? Tilt it to the left. Tilt it to the right, and maybe just another one going more or less straight up. V shape, that's all we're thinking. Okay. Big Brian, yeah, and the one thing about Big Brian, and what this will be quite a, a tutorial where there's quite a bit more detail than just doing the painting this week, guys. Big Brian, my Big Brian is round ended, yeah, you notice. Quite a lot of new brushes, they've always got a little point on them. Now the problem with that, I find, with loose, is it fights against you. So mine are rounded off, but if yours is pointy, what you'll be doing, you, you'll be trying to push down on the brush to splay it out more. And that's really because of the end of the brush. So be aware of that. You don't do anything about it particularly, but just be aware that if there's a point on your brush, then it might be slightly more difficult. Okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a little bit of water on my brush. Um, let's see what we've got in there. Well, I've got salt in there, guys. I was trying to bring it over so you could see a bit easier with the water. But uh, anyway, I half dip my brush in um, water. And then I'm going to do two things. I'm going to put water on a couple of them. But just a little dab. Yeah, It doesn't have to be the shape. Just a little dab. And on that one. Then I'm going to pick up... Uh, Rose Opera, and that's going to be very weak. It's going to be a T strength, yeah. So if you're not sure what T strength is, just just think of it in terms of it's the weakest weakest thickness, and then it's coffee, cream, and butter. So your next one is going to be thicker. One after that's thicker than that, and then your top one is almost out of the tube. T strength, yeah. I just put my brush at the top and drag it to the bottom. And then push it back up, yeah. Same with the second one, and just push it back up. Now I'll do two more, but I won't put water down beforehand. Same strength. Drag it down, push it back up. Drag it down, push it back up. Yeah. So very uber simple, really uber simple. The only slight difference is a bit of water softens it and allows it to flow a bit more. With it just being liquid paint, but straight onto the surface, exactly where I put the brush, it's going to follow all the time. With this, it gives you a bit of mystery, a bit of a guess as to where it's going to go. So I've got my first colour on, and all I do with the second colour, which is CAD red, to a uh, coffee strength, so it's slightly thicker. On the second bit, I'm just going to drag some of that in. Drag some in the second bit. 
direction in the second bit. Yeah, so light, dark, that's all it is. Then change my brush and I'm going to use Miss Rigger and I'm going to pick up a little bit of, um, let's go for cad red, but again it's a little bit thicker. So this is now cream, so it's thicker than it was before. And I'm going to put the stem on. So I'm going to put a little dot of this at the bottom. I'm going to move it to one side and then flick down. Yeah. Move to one side because that's really how it sort of grows. Yeah. So all that is is a tiny, tiny little flick. Ah, sorry guys. Good point Sharon. Um, Sharon, well done. I'll move it down for you. So, got that on. Now, all I've got now is a bit of water. I'm going to extend that line by dragging water through the red that I've put on. So, it softens it, you see. I soften it on the paper as opposed to in the, uh, in the palette. So, got that on. And my final little thing little dot of um, purple and that's just under the flower and all that is is a suggested shadow and a joiny bit yeah so they're bleeding in those have bled together and really at the moment that's all we do we go back slightly later The, um, and we can pick out a little bit of shape in it, but we don't want to do much more than that. Okay, so that is the little flowers. I'll bring it down even more, guys. I'm not sure if we're in or not. Right, okay. Second bit is going to be the florally area. So all I'm going to do is a little shape for a start. Just almost a half of a burger yeah that's all it is half of a burger and we're just going to put a few little prongs going out so these are the edges of leaves yeah right all we do i'm going to start use big brine again now notice how big the brush is in comparison to the area that i'm actually working with is is filling the space quite well which is what i want if you're using a small brush, you've got to go back a thousand times and it's dry. Just be brave and just be experimental. If you're not used to using a big brush, just try it and go with the slight awkwardness of it. I've got a bit of water on now. I'm going to tap a bit in. So there's a few blobs of water, but not all over. Then I'm going to think about light coming this way. And I'm going to go with a mix of lemon yellow and cad orange to let's say coffee strength so got my brush plonk it down yeah that's on the left hand side okay so there's a few pockets of water uh, color rather there's uh, light areas but all, is, all I'm doing is plonking the, the brush down. Got that on. Then I'm going to use um, Royal Blue, Coffee Strength, plonk it next to it. Now if you can leave these gaps, a few little gaps in there, that's great. I'll be thrilled as custard if you can do that, because they'll be useful. And also, when I'm dragging the brush across, I'm taking it to a point in places because these could be leaves that are sticking out you just see in the, the end of the leaf. Okay, second colour. Now third colour is uh, sap green, coffee strength. I'm starting around here. So you notice how I work the way across. And I'm saying that um, royal blue 
and sap green are about the same um, level of darkness, if you understand, which I know you do, it's my description of it. The yellow and the lemon uh, cad orange are light, these are mid colours or slightly lighter than mid colours, let's call them mid colours, and then I do slightly darker ones on this edge. So my next colour is mauve, coffee strength, just plonk this down, Let's see how I try and make a bit of a shape at the end. They don't have to be perfect at all. And then I go back and just tap a few bits in. Okay. Now that just looks like colours drifting across the page, which it is. And the key is not to go back in too early. Try and gauge how dry it is. So if I put colour in now, it's just going to bleed. Yeah. But over here it's a bit drier, so it's not going to bleed as much. But we're just trying to gauge how much um, how wet this is basically okay so we've got that on and what I'm going to do is take this rigger and I'm going to put a few little lines I use a bit of Indian red and where I've got these gaps I'm just going to flick a little line through with the the famous Miss Rigger flick so that's why I keep some dry areas because then you can see what they are are the stems of the flowers. But if you drag them through these dry areas, they'll stay very sharp. Yeah. So I've got those on, and these are bleeding into the colour now, which is useful. Welcome along, Linda. Good to see you guys. If you're just joining us now, uh, quick question, Peggy. Sorry. Uh, after you drop the water on the paper, do you dry do you dry your brush before picking? Ah, very good point, Peggy. What I do when I put the water on, and I'm letting that dry a little bit now, so I can show you this. I'll pick water up out of my uh, bath. No, out of my water container, I'll show you. I'll pick some water up on Big Brian, I'll put it down, yeah. Then I dry it, yeah. I dry it each time. Then I pick up some more water, then I pick up the paint, and then I put the paint in, yeah. So I won't put it on there because I need that for my thing. But very good point. So it's I put water on, then I dry the brush then I pick new water up because otherwise I'll put the water on here and I'll go straight or may, you may go straight to pick the paint up but it'll be too dry and consequently by picking it up then it'll be too thick because you're trying to scoop it up so every time I put water down I dry the brush off then I get new water then I get the paint then I put the paint on then I clean the brush off then I get water then I get paint. So whether I'm putting water down or paint, every time I've done the action of water down or paint down, I dry the brush, then pick new water up, because then I know exactly what's in the brush. Very key point. Excellent for reminding me there, uh, Peggy. Quite that, I think just that simple thing is a thing that people can uh, um, spend ages trying to work out what the problem is. And that could be one of the key things. Right, okay, so now this is drier. And just as an interesting thing, you may be able to see it, maybe not, but I'll describe it. The paper's risen. It's also got my fingerprint in there, but the paper's risen in the centre because the paper's swollen. It makes a hill. So at this point here, and here, and here, that's where the paint has rolled off to. Yeah, so it's going to be drier in the centre and wetter at the edges. So I know if I put paint in here, it's going to bleed about. If I put it in here, it's not going to roll as far. So just that thing, simple thing, but very important in understanding how to, uh, how to, how to use this technique. So we've got that on. So now I'm just going to chase out a few shapes. Not literally chase them out, 
I've got me I've got my shorts on and I've got me running uh, running shoes on, but I don't mean like that. I mean just chase out some shapes. So what I do, if I want to chase them out this side, I want a slightly darker colour than a settled. So here it's sort of lemon yellow cad orange. So what I'm going to do with Mini Dave, first I touch the area and that tells me how wet it is. And I can see just by touching it, it's bleeding a little bit. Then I'm going to scoot it round. And this is on page 17,406 of Janet Kyle's uh, Style Kyle negative painting book. But all I'm looking at there is a shape underneath and I'm suggesting that could be a leaf. That's it. Very simple. Hi there Rita, welcome, good to see you and La La Art Studio, welcome from North California. Good to see you there, good to see you. Just drifting that under there, drifting that under there and that gives me a, 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 a leaf shape. Yeah. Um, then I can change colour a bit, not me but the colour I use. And say if I want to leave here, all I'm doing is saying I want to leave just there. I'm just dragging a shape around it. Yeah, and another. But I won't put too many on. But what it does is very subtly pick out a negative shape. I can use any of the colours that I've got. Like I say, I was trying to make it just slightly darker. Let's have one just here. Now your key thing you need to be looking for is how far does it bleed when you put the paint down. So if it just goes quite swampy like this, then leave it. Don't, don't think, oh no, that's not right. It's absolutely fine. But you don't want to be putting more on because you're just pouring paint into a, uh, uh, a painty area. Where it's drier, like this is a nice crisp edge, I know I can put the paint down there, it's, it's only going to go where I place it. And that picks out a really nice leaf just there. Same here, I can drag one round. And you don't have to do the full leaf, just do a section of it. Yeah. So simple, but it just picks out these things as we go along. And once you've got these, the, your thing mapped out, and that's really what you're doing. You can go in and put stronger colours in that we've used, so purple to a thicker consistency. Drop a bit of that in, a little bit there. And this, this is just negative painting. And I really would encourage you to practice it. I'd almost encourage you to do a full page of this. Don't rush it because you'll start to get a feel of it. You only need to see one or two leaves appearing and then you'll get a feel of, yes, I can, A, I can do it, and B, you'll just know the technique. So all you do, that's dry, yeah. I'll just draw a bit of a shape round it, almost as if you're doing a very clumsy uh, attempt at lining it in. So I'm going round there and then that, that is now the leaf. And that is the negative painting. Yeah? I know you guys can do it. I've seen your work. So now it's building into a, it's got some volume to it. People overwork it and try too hard. Try less, guys, try less. Bit at the top, there's a leaf. Yeah? Bit at the side. You, you see, you don't have to do them all. You don't have to think, well, how do I do that one? I must do that one. Well, if you can't see a, a reasonable way of doing it, don't do it because you only need a few of them and that gives people an idea, a template of what you what the actual uh, what you're doing basically, where the shapes are. So there's a few leaves jumped out there, just gently. Simple thing to do, but a great, great practice thing. Right, I'll just pop back up to the top and then we'll just do the uh, uh, plant pot. So we've got these here. Now what they are, a, a medium sort of the equal weight. So if I want one of these leaves to either go backwards or forwards, I either put a bit of paint here to bring this one forwards or bring it, put a bit of paint there 
to bring that one forward. So I'll vary which ones I do. I'll use Mini Dave and you can just use the colours you've got on there. Now if you want to be subtle with this, which I'm not, but if you want to be, you use just a very, very light um, thickness of paint, so coffee or cream. So we'll push that one back. So all I do is draw some liquid paint over here, over that join, and then I'll just push a bit of water through it to knock that leaf back. Yeah. If I want to do the other side, or if I want this one to come forward, I draw the petal, I said a leaf, it's a petal, just there, and then push that back. I mean, that's very subtle, it's very, very marginal. If you make that really thick, it's really going to jump back, but it can be, you don't want to, you don't want to leap too far ahead in thickness, you just want to do it in incremental stages. So I've got those, you can do half of one, so here I've got in, uh, cad red, I'm just doing a half of the leaf, but I find it better if you just do a bit, a blob of paint, just to there, rather than painting up there, because it's going to be the same thickness, and then I'm taking the water off my brush, the paint off my brush, and just pushing it back up. So by the time I've pushed that up to here, it's um, it's quite weak. Yeah. Let's try different colour. Let's try a bit of mauve. Now I know I've not put mauve in, in here, but uh, let's see how it looks. So let's do a bit just there. So this is a petal, and one there with Mimove, yeah. Hi there, Mimsy, welcome along. So there's my little Mauve, War, just water. Push it back up. So that gives you that inside bit of the flower, yeah. What else, I tell you what, I'm just gonna try um, a bit of Royal Blue, see what that does. So this could be, let's go this way. So that's at the front. That's at the back, only taking it down halfway. Plonk a bit on, go and have a cup of tea, come back with a bit of water on. Yeah? So that shows you inside the flower. So all of these things are just little bits of practice, but it just shows you how simple it is to plonk the colour on then wait for it to dry a bit and then negatively take the colours back by chopping them off and taking it that way, chop off that way, just a bit in the centres, all little experimental things, but um, oh, they'll do you good. Oh, they'll, oh they'll, they'll, they'll do you good. Right, okay, got that on. Again here, all dry now. And that's, there's a hill there, and one day I might walk that with some Kendall mint cake. That's famous around these parts, not around these parts, a bit further north. Kendall Mint Cake. Very, very sweet. Right. But that will flatten out a bit later on. Um, and again, if I want to take these back a bit further, which I don't really, what you really want is a good, quick, throw the colour on, pick out a few leaves, and then you've gone. That's it. The more you fiddle, the tighter it gets, that, that's as simple as it is. But if I did want to fiddle, which I don't, but I will, say I want to go in here, pick out another leaf, I've got a bit of mauve. Again, that's just liquid paint, just there, yeah? Now, I'm just popping off with Mini Dave to give him a wash. There we go, no sound effects. It's but he's had a wash. Now, I've come back with water on still, just a little bit of water, and now I can brush this colour away. Yeah? So I've picked out another leaf just here. And again, you'll get very, uh, you'll get very into this and start, you'll pick out a thousand leaves, but 
I would really encourage you to pick out a thousand leaves rather than doing five and say, right, I've cracked it. Once you've done a thousand leaves, you will know how to do this quite easily. And it's at not wasted time. So there's my foliage, there's my flowers, and then we've just got a little plant pot, okay? So all that would be is a rectangle to start off with. Then I angle the sides slightly. Yeah, a little curve at the bottom. And this one's got a lip on it. So I'll make it a little bit wider at the top, a little bit of a curve, but that curve is less than that. So that's quite a big curve. That's not a big curve, yeah? Because the higher it is, the more it comes to where your eye line is, and where your eye line is, it's dead straight, yeah? Okay, there's my pot. We've not got any foliage in overhanging it, but that's where it is. Um, what I'll actually do, I'll try with Big Brian. So, again, a little bit of water, a bit down the middle. And I'm gonna start with, let's have a little think, yeah. Same sort of color as the, these leaves. I'm gonna go lemon yellow and cad orange. So I'll plonk a bit down, bring some down, but I like leaving little gaps because if it's very perfectly painted, then it doesn't leave any areas for the imagination. So we've got that on, lights come in this way, like on these, don't suddenly put it that way, otherwise you've got the sun there and the moon there, yeah? Always keep the lights direction the same. Those colours, now I'm going for Indian red. Almost just straight down the middle. Yeah. So it'll bleed that way. It'll 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 only go as far as the dry paper is. And I'm deliberately leaving some little white gaps. They're not accidents. They're deliberate leaving of some white gaps. Hi there, Judith Rosario. Welcome along and. Francisco, welcome along. Good to see you guys. So we've got those two colours on, but basically light, medium. Any idea of the next colour, guys? Answers on a postcard. That'd be great. So. Hey. Nice one, Rosario. Dark blue. Could work, could work. Purple, Blimey. somewhere in between, guys. Any of those would be absolutely fine. I've got purple basically because that's what I was using. So mauve, purple. You don't you don't want to jump off and do something crazy, but any colour, strangely enough, any colour would work. But you're trying to keep in harmony with what you're doing here. So I'm, I've got purple. So I've got those on. Notice how I've left those little gaps and another gap here. And then all I'm gonna do, while I've got that color on, I'm just gonna drop a little bit under that lip. Now it'll bleed. Now, again, one of the key areas where people uh, get a bit confused with this is they'll drop it on, then they'll start moving the brush in this. Just leave it, just let it flow. If you start moving it, all you're doing is moving the purple or the mauve or whatever color you're using further away. Just let it bleed naturally. The only thing I would do if I want more there is just touch that area again and let it let it flow. That's it. That's as simple as your little um, flower pot is. Phew. So that is the three components. So we've got the flowers, We've got the leaves and we've got the flower pot. Just, I've just broke them down for you in how I do them. I'd say the key, t key takeaways from that, and actually just back to Peggy's, question, Pe Peggy's uh, prompt there, um, always 
when you put the colour down or just water down, clean your brush or get the liquid out of your brush. Then pick up new water. Yeah. If you don't, you're either going to drag colour back into your palette, which you've not seen, or you're going to drag water back into your uh, into your palette. Sorry about the wobbles, folks. It's uh, yeah. You're either going to take colour back to your palette, water back to your palette, then you're going to flood your palette, then you're going to get in a bit of a pickle. So just, just, just take it nice and gently and build it up. Practice these elements, yeah, and then you'll be absolutely flying. Okay, folks, so now let us march on. If you're ready for the main event, to um, the little plant pot with the cyclamen. Okay, so you, I think roughly... Ah, okay. What do you think your... Uh, what is the diagnosis, Rosario? It could be one of those. It's, it will be something very simple, very simple. There's, no, there's nothing complicated with this. Just before I leave this, this is still wet. If it's too strong, what I do is get a little bit of tissue, tear it off so it's a small, usable bit. I, I tear it because it makes a random shape. And then, if I want to lighten this area, I just pick it off and a bit more and a bit more. So it gives a nice light feel to it. So you can really throw the colour on if you want to and then um, make it lighter as you go along. So very simple, bit of tissue, no expense other than tissue expense. So that is everything guys. Are we ready to uh, rumble with the drawing? Let's get started then, folks. So again, this is the area I want to work with. I know I want to keep it in, within there, within here, so I don't want it flying out of the frame. And I want the uh, plant pot to be reasonably high so it's got a surface to, to, to stand on, yeah? So I'm gonna say I want the bottom of the plant pot to be there. And I want the, what have we got to go in it? I'm going to say the plant pot top to be about there. So it's not massive. Then it's going to be foliage. And then it's going to be um, flowers on the stems. So everything should fit. And all we'll do is just little dots to uh, guide me through. Okay. Welcome along, Jessica. Good to see you. Just sitting down to paint. Perfect. Okay. Paint now, paint now, go now, go now. So there's my plant pot, yep. There's the width, roughly. And all I'm doing for the width is equal distance in from either side. And uh, I'll just put little dots to start with. And then remember what we did here, we took a line from that one and slightly in, as plant pots are. And I don't know, but I think they may be for stacking Two, uh, no, but would they be for stacking this shape? And also, would it make it easier to get the contents out later on? I think that could be the reason. Sometimes when you think about objects, it helps you draw them. You think, well, why is it that shape? Well, maybe those two reasons. So there's my angles, yeah. Curve at the bottom, put the dot there. There it is, yeah. Then we have that little lip, don't we? Remember the lip? I don't know if in different parts of the world you have the lip or not, but I, I wonder what the lip's for. I don't know. Any ideas? Dot in the middle. The angle's less because it's higher up. And then we'll, that one's about straight. But the thing with this one, it's going to be mainly covered because there's going to be leaves draping over it. Yeah, there's my plant pot. Right, all I want here is a rough area for how high the foliage goes, and you don't have to stick to it, it's just a little guide. I'm gonna say about there, yeah? And they're gonna drape over the side of the plant pot a bit, so it's not just gonna finish there. So I'll just put little di uh, triangle shapes just at the edge. 
to where I put my little dots. Yeah, that's about right. You know, it's very um, simple. Just very simple uh, edges of shapes. Okay. You can put a few reminders in the center. So they can point that way, point that way, down here. So sometimes you, you forget. So sometimes if you put it on the drawing, it helps a bit more. So we've got those on. Then we've got our little uh, cyclamen. So all we did, little V shape. Might start in the center with one. I'm putting a few down, I might not use all of them. Yeah. And I won't bother with the stems because they're so simple, they're just a line dropping down. Yeah. Um, only other thing, we've got a surface that it's on, so I'm going to put a line behind the plant pot quite, quite a way, and that gives us a standpoint for it. And I think on the painting, I've got one that's fallen off, so I might just put a little mark here to suggest that's what... Uh, that's what happened. Right, okay guys, so that's the drawing. See how yours goes. Again, don't spend too much time on it. Sometimes urgency in your drawing and in your painting helps. So push yourself along. It can easily dry and um, add to it as you go along. I mean, I could easily add another section to that, even though it's pretty dry, it doesn't have to be uh, wet into wet all the time, but it's a useful thing uh, to get that all done fit that little section of the painting done all uh, all together Okay, all right. Are we ready guys? So we roughly know what we're doing because we've already done it And this is a good idea for any of your paintings Just have a spare bit of paper and dab the stuff out and it doesn't matter if when you dab the stuff out It's wrong because what it's doing is eliminating some things you won't try on your main painting. You can still practice and fiddle about on here, but try and eliminate things on there and work out how you're going to approach it. Right, okay. So I've got big Brian. There he is. The Doyen of Brian. So we'll do the flowers for a start. A little bit of water on the brush, a few little dabs. And I'm only going to start with a few. And then I'll go in. And if I want to add any more, I'll do that um, when I've got some down, not do the whole lot, because I'll have a better idea of how many I want. First colour is uh, Rose Opera. Yeah. There we go, Rose Opera. Lights come in this way. Big warning. Just drag it down one way. Yeah, and a little curve there, and then I'm going to put the, the cab red the other side. There it is. I'm trying to change the position of some of these, i.e. they're not all in the same angle, and I might actually put another couple together. Maybe one there. See, once I've got them on, I think, well, okay, a bit lacking there. So I'll put one there, got that on. Now clean my brush, remember, clean your brush. Dab it on your tissue, then I pick up a bit of water again. Then I know exactly what I'm working with. Otherwise you're doing it with a, you're guessing. Cad red, I'm starting at the bottom, just dragging that up a bit. And that one. And if they run into each other, so what? Good, well done. See, this one's going to run into its uh, its chum. Yeah, they've got those floating all over. And then, I think we change brush, and we got uh, Miss Rigori. 
and uh, that's what I think. Yeah, I think we had a bit of cad red, cad red or Indian red, up to you. Cad red, to my mind, would be lighter on Miss Rigger. And what I'm going to do is just at the bottom of the flower, just drag it in a bit and flip a bit of a line down. Now, don't worry if it goes into your greens. That's good. And one thing I'm trying to do is not do all the lines either dead straight or the same angle. I'll just change them slightly each time. See, I've gone straight through that flower, which is good. Didn't even stop, didn't even stop. Got that one across again. And you'll get the information for how the all the elements of the painting are by looking at the looking at the reference, looking at the object. If you can actually get the object, if you've got if you've got a plant, then uh, that's even better. Photos can be a bit tricky. You might have to guess what some of the things are doing. So I've got all those stems on but I've taken the paint off, just a bit of water. I'm just gonna drag the ends down a bit by softening them with water. Otherwise, you've gotta find some of these, these to land. And you don't wanna be painting around them, just paint over them, and then we go back and put a bit of stem on later, if that sounds good. Hey, that sounds good, Laurel. That sounds good. Right, I've got all those on. Your flowers are almost done. I think we've put a little bit of either mauve or purple just at the base. Now, some of mine are still wet. Some are, uh, what's the opposite? Not wet. But these can either bleed into the flower or be quite static. So that one's not moving much, these are a little bit. A variation's ideal. Yeah? So we've got those just floating about. Right, okay. So we've got that on. Now let's do the leaves. I'm going to use. Um, no, I'm going to use Big Brian. Yeah, that's what we did before. There we go. I've uh, put a bit of water on. I'm going to use the same sort of colours. Now the water is just placed down. It's just a reservoir for me to use as I go along. I'll just tell you a little quick story, guys, while I'm, while I'm at it. I went to I went to visit my mom, my lovely mom. Big shout out for mom. She when did it go? I went on a Saturday evening, and I took some food. We had traditional fish and chips. The first colour is going to be lemon yellow and cad orange. Fish and chips, yeah. And then um, we had fish and chips and watched telly and had a chat about this that and the other lemon yellow just pushing this out now you don't have to take it too far for a start you can easily go back and extend this yeah we had fish and chips remember those little gaps as well if you can they'll be good be great to see them we had fish and chips we watched telly had chat then we both we both nodded off we both nodded off and it got a bit late and then I stayed a bit longer than I normally do. So I said, all right, I've got to be going now. Got to be going. And um, Royal Blue Coffee Strength. Off, uh, said me farewells and off I went. And I went outside. And when I came outside of the house, it's a tiny little village, but there's a pub in the village. And when I came out of the uh, house, there's a lot of people standing up at the crossroads. Next colour is going to be uh, sap green. A lot of people stand up at the crossroads, so I thought, oh, I wonder what's happening up there. I had to turn my car and go that way. And when I got to the pub, 
a chip van, a fish and chip van. I don't know if these are available all over the place, but in the UK, chip vans where it's a van with chips in it and they go to people who like chips. Anyway, the chip van had just crashed through the front of the pub, which I thought, that's, that's not great. So the locals were trying to push the chip van out of the pub and um, I wasn't sure if they were having fish and chips as well, but they, uh, anyway, I don't, nobody was hurt, so I did check up. But the, this chip van ran straight through the front of the pub. And I thought, oh dear, that's dreadful, not good. But at least nobody was not hurt, which is good. Next colour, mauve, this side. So I drove to the next town, which is on the way home, and I got to the crossroads, and there was another crash. So there was a car strewn across the road, people on the side, and then uh, all the police cars flashing. So I thought, this ain't great, this isn't, this isn't a great journey. Luckily for me, that was the only two, but if I'd have, if I'd not fallen asleep, I think I may have uh, been a lot closer to the, uh, the two little accidents. So uh, there you go. It pays to have a snooze. Right, so I've dropped those colours on, guys. Just gently. The, yeah, save the beer, Janet, exactly. French fries, yeah, that's what I mean. That's what they, th they could have been French fries. Right, okay. So I've got the colour on. Now, as I said before, these are bleeding together. You see where it's gathering. Now, if I wanted to, I could pick that off with a bit of tissue in a few moments. And what I'm going to do is just go in a bit, drop a couple of bits of stronger colour in. Yeah. So they're all the same weight. I can drop little bits here. And this will just strengthen the leaves in that area when I, uh, when I want to uh, pick them out. A few little dabs at the edge so I can extend the leaves a bit more. Now your key thing here is not to dive in and move all that about. Yeah, Just leave it. Leave it, leave it, leave it. Yeah, absolutely, Janet. I think, uh, yeah, meant to be when it meant to be. Right, got this. So now I've got a bit of tissue, and I will pick some of this excess off. But again, don't move it about. Just hold it, and it'll jump in. By the action of a bloke called Bert Capillary. Capillary action, yeah? Okay. So you see, I've just got a... a, a a tone all the way across, light and dark, suggesting a few little leaves and bits and bobs. So I'll leave that now. Let's go down and do the uh, plant pot. Okay, so I've got my plant pot. I've just got danger, uh, big brine again. Now I'm going to put a bit of water just in, roughly down the centre, just under the leaves as well, not touching them, because if I touch that, it'll bleed down, which will look nice, but I want to wait for a minute or two for that. I'm gonna start with lemon yellow, and actually a little bit of Indian red. Drag it, leave, drag it. So I'm leaving those gaps, because they're nice little breaks for people to fill in the gap with the imagination. Indian red, down the centre, and again I'm just taking them close to the leaves but not right up to them still at the moment. Then, now then I'm going to use purple but you like you, with the suggestions early you can use um, blue, mauve, sepia even, and a good thing here, I'm just going to draw the line almost in. And then I can decide where I want to leave my little uh, gaps of white. Going around there with the purple. And 
Mini. Going on to Mini Days now. So I've got all this colour on. Now I might shift it about on here a bit. So I've got pockets of uh, colour. But what I want to do is take a little bit. Now we didn't, we d couldn't do it on there because we didn't have the leaves. So I'm going to take a little bit of royal blue on Mini Dave. And then I'm just dragging this under some of the leaves, but I can leave a little bit of a white gap because that just defines the very subtle edge of the leaf. Again, doesn't have to be all the way around, just little little bits. It's surprising how little you have to do to make it um, believable. Yeah, see where it's gathering again. Look, and go for a, go for a swim there, look. I can check, take my chips in there. So they almost bleed in together. So I've got all that floating about. Um, again, I'll leave that for a moment or two. I tend to leave it for a little bit, a, several, two or three minutes, because this will the pigment has to float through the water to get onto the paper. If you put the colour and then lift it straight off, it's not actually grabbed onto the paper. Right, let's pop back up. This is semi-wet, and what we did here was just trying to chase out a few shapes. So again, I'm going in with a sap green. And I can start to pick around some shapes. So I'm looking at a leaf just there. I'm touching it to see what happens. It bleeds a bit. So I can put some of that loose bleeding on. If you can't see any leaves, just make the, make a shape like half of a leaf. Again, you don't have to go around everything. Purposely leave a bit of a gap. The less you do, really, the more effective. But the only thing with that is you need a little bit of confidence to do that. Purple we've got. And if you can't, like I say, if you can't see a leaf, just make a mark. And then you can start to say, well, oh, actually I can see one there, because that's the top side, and that could be the bottom side. Just here, this is cobalt blue. And again, you can see how the different areas of the painting are at different sort of bite points, i.e. It's a bit wetter over here, it's quite wet there, it's a bit drier up here. So that'll tell you what's going to happen when you put the paint down. Try not to take these colours right up to the edge because you end up painting leaves that are falling out of the painting. I.e. you're painting down here, just let it happen and uh, see where it goes. Purple again. See a nice little leaf there just by chopping around that edge. I'll show you a good little thing in a minute where we just drift these off down the side. Okay, so I've got those on, and again, the bleeding. This is wet, so don't jump in and start moving it about too much. Do a little bit. And, and go off. Have, you need, you do need a glass of champagne. You do need caviar. Picking a bit off. Picking all that excess off. You can even do it in here. I mean, this just changes what you've done, marginally, but it's surprising because you you see it with fresh eyes quite quite quickly. So we've got that on. I'll put a few of those little lines in. I forgot to do them, but it's a dry area. So we've got Indian red. Just dragging a couple through. And if you can marry any of these up to, well, that was better. Let's marry that one up to that stem. 
same here. Let's well, let's just take that in a bit. That's the other thing. These stems are not all going to be growing from the back of the arrangement, so we'll need to bring a few of these stems down over the greenery. Only bits, so we'll have that one there. Cad red, just bring it in. Bit there. With the stems, sounds like sounds like a marriage. With these stems, that's not a great wedding gift, is it? I bought you some stems. I don't think that that was last too long, do you? Oh, I bought you the flowers as well, but I bought you the stems. I thought that uh, I thought you might like that, uh, Mimsy. There we go. So picking some of those out, and then also you can just run stems over the top of the green. So all the component parts will uh, start to bring this together. Again, I tend to put more stems than you actually need because it fills it out more. You know, if you just had whatever, the, how many flowers there are, seven or eight flowers, if you just add those, then uh, look, it'd look a bit sparse. A bit like when I do catering. Three sandwiches, yep. Yeah. That should last, that should do well. Although I went to somebody's and all the all I think there was it was a wed it was a wedding reception but all the all they put out was cheese for the buffet no, nothing else not even crackers cheese I said come on you can't just eat cheese. it's not an, it's not an easy thing just to eat cheese is it <laughs> anyway so I pick out a few leaves again and again each time I'm, a little bit of time has passed. Yeah, meaning the paper can be a bit drier. So some of these leaves that I sort of half picked out, I could firm up a bit more. And really the, the successful ones. Got them on, I've just got water on now. Well, I thought I had, but it is water really. Uh, soften it off and bleed it off. Well, yeah, exactly. Unless you're a mouse, it wasn't. Uh, I didn't see many mice there, Mimsy. To be honest, never thought of it like that. All you need to do at the top, because really this is a curved shape, so we've got leaves here that you can see more because they're in, you know, pro not profile, but straight at you. But when they're at the top, all they are are little lines, really. So you could just put little lines down, wobble them a bit, and they take you over the top of the umbrella. How's that sound? That sounds a good description. Got that on. Again, I can pop down here again. So I'm, I'm, gra I'm keep going. Top, middle, bottom, then back up to the middle, then back to the bottom. And that what that's doing is giving giving it some time to dry, or or get drier. You don't just want to paint everything dry, because you lose the benefit of um, the flow. Now what I'm doing here is just putting a bit of water on and just hutching some of the colours about a bit. And again, if they weren't, if they were bone dry colours, you couldn't, it'd be harder to do that. But because they're still a little bit fluid, you can shape them quite easily. Okay. 
just under the rim of the uh, plant pot, excuse me elbow, uh, offer a little bit of cobalt blue. Now that could be a leaf just there because it's hanging down. A little bit of blue under some of the leaves. And then a bit of water. My slight chocolate. <laughs> they were in a pizzeria on the way home, riding and groom, fire me. <laughs> bit peckish then. Yeah, they're difficult difficult things though. To catering for folks. How many's gonna be there? All this sort of business. I don't know about how many's gonna be there, they tell you, don't they? Don't just don't just rock up and eat your cheese. Now I'm dragging a little bit of purple down, but I'm jutting, look I'm jutting, I'm jutting it like that. And that gives a sort of um, bit of textured edge. Chocolate, you know a lot about what mice eat guys, aren't they? You could have your own show. Now I've got a little bit of Indian red. I'm just dragging a couple of lines of that down as well. Again, not straight lines. It just gives a bit of stronger texture to the, uh, whatever the thing's made of. So terracotta, just pockets of richer stuff. Oakley Coakley's. Um, oh yeah, I know what we've got. A little bit of flower stuff. So we decided what we we're going to do. You can either use uh, any of the colours of the flowers. I want to have a combination of Cad Red and um, Rose Opera. Yeah. Now let's see. Let's take that one back, just a little bit. So I'm going to put a blob of colour, yeah? Blob of colour there. Bit there. You don't have to do them all, although I might end up doing that. And a blob of colour there. So that one will go back. This will come forward, forward, forward. Take my colour off. Bit of water. Okay, so that chops them in half, makes them into a fuller, a finer fuller thing. Bit of mauve this time maybe. Now I've got this one over here, I quite like the way they bled together. But what I could do, bit of negative look, bit of mauve just there. Bit of water. And then that brings that forward and pushes that one back. Now it's as simple. It's as simple as that. Can overthink it by a mile. Bit of royal blue. Very weak royal blue. Andrew, very weak royal blue, sir. I know. I know, Andrew. Bit of purple at the bottom. And that's going to bleed up, isn't it? That's going to bleed up into the boot. Not that leaf. Oh, what are you doing? Crazy. But effective. Okay. Again here, I've got one here and one here. I could put a tiny bit there. I'm thinking of shaping behind that. Then water to bleed it off again. One at the top. Let's have a look. Let's... Mm -hmm. That one there. Okay. So you've got your little um, bit more detail in the flowers. 
Right, the base. Let's have a bit of water here. That's under and round. And I'm going to go a bit of cad orange, Indian red. And again, I'm just placing that down for a start. I'm not covering all, all of the area. I just want to see where things are. Then, a bit of mauve. Roughly underneath. Got that on. Now I'm going to put a little fallen flower. There it is. You couldn't be splodier than that. But your eye will pick that up as a fallen flower because you've got, tells you what they are at the top, tells you what it does on the packet, which is up there. A um, little bit of cobalt blue and purple. And this is just right under the uh, pot. So I put the colour on quite relatively strong, not quite strong. And then I'm just going to drag some this way. And the other thing I'll actually do, I'll put a bit of this under this, what really is just a mark. And that can act as a shadow for a fallen uh, flower. Final bit of royal blue, not royal blue, it's very cobalt blue. So I'm making it just a bit stronger this side. And I might even just push some of this colour into the uh, plant pot. When I said might, I think I just did. So very simply uh, placed in. Got that on. Right, okay. So I'll just look back into here. I want to do a couple of little darker bits. So I'm going Indian red, purple, which almost makes sepia. <laughs> and I can add a few little stems. So if this is the top of my pot, and I've got a little stem there, I'll just extend one there. What you want to try and, well, one thing that will enhance it is when you drag things a bit further than they originally were. I, you've got a few marks here and here, but if you drag the lines down a bit more, then it will extend certain things. So uh, we need to bring, say, let's bring this one around a bit more, not much. Then if you can find a leaf to just tuck it under, even better. Bring that over the top of that one and down to there. So it fills, it, it, it allows flowers to grow from certain uh, other places beyond where you first place them. Right, um, yeah, I was going to extend these things this end a bit, wasn't I? Now, I've got the colours there. All I would do for that, because that's relatively dry now. Well, in my pleasure, Anna, it's very kind of you to say. Just on this edge. A little bit of water. 
water, no it's not water, a bit of liquid paint. Maybe a bit here as well. So they're blobs of same colour, but I'm just extending this down a bit. The tiny, these tiny little dots. Once I've got them on, I've just got water again. You see how many times I just have water on the brush. Then I just tap it like a kinder surprise, but I'm just extending them a bit. More water. Very soft, very uh, cascading, yeah? We've got that little flower there. I don't want to put too much in it. All you need is a tiny little dot of something, maybe. That'll do. Um, don't know if there's much else we need to do, guys. Maybe a tiny little bit of splatter, which is the word splatter dragged out. Got a little bit of uh, Rose Opera, Miss Rigger, quite liquid. And even if I say so myself, I've said it before, but Miss Rigger does do a, a mighty good splatter. She won't mind me saying that. A little bit of green, quite accurate. Then again, water, remember that one? Now you can just dab a bit of water into the splatter and just extend it about a bit. So it's not much, to, it's not really to move things about that you don't want, it's just to extend them. And then you become as much a viewer as the actual viewers. So you're just seeing what happens, you're not sure, but you're just testing it out. Bit of water again. Quite like these long lines sometimes. They just give movement. So as 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 is standard, the further you are through the painting, the smaller the areas you're gonna do. My pleasure, Linda, give it a go. It's sim simplification. You can re-complicate it when you've done it simply, really. But you're better off doing it simply. And uh, you're just putting key elements in so people get it. And quite often people try to over-explain it in a painting. And I am guilty of that as well. I know how easy it is to do. This is just a bit of uh, purple, then a bit of water. I'm dabbing this. I do this most times. I very rarely just leave it solid unless it's right at the end. Because I like the soft edges and moving it about. And you notice these little white bits all the way through it. Uh, they're very useful. If you paint it twice, they. Uh, if you paint, if you painted this, but you covered all of these little white bits up, and then you painted it like this, it's worth comparing. I personally like these little bits because it gives it movement, it makes it fresher, more vibrant, whereas when it's all covered then uh, Hi there Sharon, sorry, you got it on, you got it on the last one, hey all, got it, got you. <laughs> big, big, um, yeah sorry where was I? Somewhere, anyway. 
you could have you could have a little bit of detail on some of the leaves. Yeah, quite a, it's so easy to overdo it, um, but it's better to do far far less. So sometimes if you have a problem um, stopping, and quite often people do, then what I would suggest two things: one, use time. So set a clock and say, right, I've got exactly, exactly 20 minutes to paint this. And when the 20 minutes is up, I drop the paintbrush, that's it. So A, it'll give some urgency to the painting, because sometimes if you take a long, if you, if you take longer than you really feel you should be taking, then it steps your game up a bit. In fact, I had quite an in interesting thing today that made me paint quicker. I went out to paint in the village and I set myself up on the village green, and it was it was several houses I was going to paint, and a hedge and doors and everything, quite a biggish painting. But then I'd set up about ten minutes. I got the drawing done. I was about to start painting, and then the local councilman turned up in his with his mower, and he was going to mow the village green. And he said, "Oh," he said, "Don't worry," and he says, "How long how long are you going to take?" And I said, 20 minutes." And he says, "Okay." I'll go and cut somewhere else and then I'll come back in 20 minutes and I thought, oh, good. But it really made me speed up and it was quite uh, quite interesting because I could hear him cutting somewhere else and it, it, the urgency was in the painting. So sometimes it's, it does help quite a bit by uh, spurring yourself on and saying, right, I've got to do this fairly quickly. You can slow down other times, but you'll, you, you, you cut corners, you don't deliberate too long when you're... Uh, there's a bit more urgency in the work, so it does help in this style. Little dobs of blue now, but again, you see I'm fiddling now, and I don't need to. Right, that will do. That is it. That's my pleasure, Viv. That's my pleasure. I um, I want people to enjoy painting as much as I do. And uh, and I, I can understand how frustrating it can be when you really want to paint and then you get stuck and you're not sure what to do next. And, and I had to learn it all myself, as in I didn't really watch anybody else paint or describe how they painted because I, I always got confused, too much information and... Um, and you really need to know exactly what's happening, what I'm doing at the time. And I always wanted to know what people, the artists, were thinking. But quite often they wouldn't, either couldn't say, because they didn't know how to describe it, or they could say, and they over-described over it, so that confused me. Or they just wouldn't tell you because it's a secret. Well, it's, um, it's not... <laughs> so, but anyway... They're the things. So, what I would suggest, guys, thank you for your very kind uh, comments. I really do appreciate your support, guys, as ever. I always do. It means the world to me and um, allows me to uh, to paint. So, it's a win-win. It's a Hopefully, you get some information and be able to paint a little bit better. And I get to be able to paint and uh, pass it on to you. So, it works both ways. Um, what I would suggest with this as we did from the start, do this for a start. You may have done this already, but go back, do it again. Do it again. Because um, it's, uh, these component parts are the key to it. Otherwise you've got to learn them on your main thing. So do them somewhere else. You can test your colours, try different colours. I mean, blue was mentioned, different colours were mentioned on here. Try those. Try different colours on here try little bits on there, just practice the elements, then bring them together. And if you're not sure how they join, practice the join. Yeah, sound good? All of these things will help. It'll get you there quite rapidly. And then when you've done this one, do it again, do it again. Maybe try the light from this angle. Yeah, maybe try the light from this angle. So this is gonna be light, dark, very dark, darker, just write it down, what's going to be light, what's going to be dark. You'll get there, guys. You'll get there very quickly. And I've seen some 
fabulous, stunning examples of uh, of your work. Um, and as you know, sometimes they work brilliantly, sometimes within your own uh, um, checklist, they don't go as well. Same with me. So um, I'm certainly not saying everything I touch turns to gold. Sometimes it doesn't. It turns to mud. But that spurs me on to have a work, work out how to do it correctly next time or better the next time. So it's a great thing and it keeps you going. And at any age, you can be a world beater at painting. It's a great thing. Um, you're, not, you're not limited by age at all even by incapacity to some degree, as long as your arm works, and even that's um, in this style, you can get round that. But you can, uh, you can be fantastic, so it's a real thing to strive for. Um, anyway, enough waffling on. I might go and uh, throw a ball for Toby, because he needs one throwing. He's, he's hurt his little paw today, so we're, we're, uh, we're taking it very steadily. He limps a little, we'll get him a little walking stick but we need him back on the mend because there's balls to fetch and there's chews to nibble. So anyway, guys, you've been absolute stars. Thank you for turning out. Thank you for supporting me and thank you for following along with tonight's uh, episode. This will be on um, the website tomorrow. Uh, or rather, it's on the website already. It'll be on um, the Facebook pages tomorrow for you to try and it'll be on YouTube for a little while longer. So uh, give it a go, guys. Post away, don't be afraid to post away, and um, enjoy the experience. So uh, thanks again, guys. You've been brilliant. Good to see you, and I'll see you all again very, very soon.